Greetings, this is Michael W. Ford. Today I'm going to discuss a topic uh, based on a question uh, asked by uh, one of the Facebook um, individuals, one who I actually know personally, uh, Duo Carnane, who is actually a uh, magister in the Order of Phosphorus. The question was, metaphysical frameworks uh, to cultivate the black flame. So, coming into Luciferianism with a dedication or an interest in the practice of magic, after 24 books in various formats, one of the questions that gets asked most frequently is, where do I begin? It's so vast. And my particular true will of developing and working with different masks of the adversary in uh, ancient pantheons to modern demonic interpretation. How does this work within a Luciferian framework to cultivate the black flame? Well, I can tell you that in many of the books, if you take Dragon of the Two Flames, if you take uh, the Rauga um, and Necrominion, uh, each one has a specific framework uh, presenting the ancient meaning of the pantheon, or the deific max, the energy or uh, spirit representing uh, that form of the adversary. And when I say adversary, I mean ancient gods and goddesses um, from a historical to a modern perspective. And what traits do those possess? How does that work for you? Well, it's easy to get it lost in where to begin, but I have to say beginning you have to start with something as simple as the 11 Luciferian points of power. Adapt these to your life slowly, individually, until you feel in tune with them. You'll create a momentum through applying them to your life. And once you start thinking in that manner, the path of magic has already begun. And you are already cultivating the black flame. The black flame is our divine consciousness. Our, uh, it's related to our spirit, our energy, our, our will. And this path leads towards, magically, knowledge and conversation of the daemon, the one Alistair Crowley called the holy guardian angel, the true will. This is the potential of the self-made excellent, continual, excellence. And it would be if you took out the individual uh, conscious desire or the everyday mundane trivial interests or dislikes and elevate it to a guiding instinctual deific mask of your self-made excellent in both a perhaps an infernal uh, way in the image of the symbol of the uh, Satan, the rebel, uh, serpent, or angel, or Lucifer the light bringer, or somewhere in between. The daemon can assume different masks, representing different aspects of energy within the self, and aims that you may have. The true will is something that becomes apparent over time, so don't worry about establishing your true will yet. You need to incorporate the 11 points of power to get that started. Now, there are a couple titles, Adversarial Light, uh, a very simplistic but straightforward grimoire utilizing the witchcraft or uh, Luciferian witchcraft aspects of practice uh, within a, a pantheonistic form. It begins with definitions of what is magic to Luciferianism compared to Levian Satanism. Uh, what are, uh, how are these all connected? The Lima, Austin Osmond Spare, and then to the Book of Enoch with the Watchers. What do the Watchers represent? Uh, and how are they a foundational deific system or mask of self-will and our determined future? Adversarial light details through steps of the Luciferian witchcraft tradition, which is initiation or knowledge obtained through knowing the self, through utilizing masks or types of energy, symbols, and representations that we use 
towards our everyday aims. It deals with the unconscious and the conscious mind. Now frameworks to cultivate the black flame. Think of basic demonology. So in adversarial light or beginning Luciferian magic or Bible the adversary. You have a very basic form dealing with the infernal or the adversarial uh, deific mask or god forms and what those powers represent historically, so pre-Christian, also at the Christian uh, uh, establishment, and how those demonic, so-called demonic forces represent to us now, how Luciferians use them. One thing, if you apply the 11 points of power, you will never bow before anything. And you will respect the powers that you invoke, but realize that they are a part of yourself to a certain extent. Every invocation has to have a name, a purpose, not just mundane material needs that you may have, but long-term uh, considerations. Look towards your goals and then connect yourself towards each deific form or invocation, if it's Cain as the symbol of the self, the same as Baphomet, or one of the watchers, Shemiyaza, or Azazel. Azazel is a representation of the morning and evening star. So it's the morning and evening star of Venus. It's, uh, Venus is the planet, uh, traditionally, of two extremes. If you look at the Assyrian Ishtar, it's the morning star, which is uh, enlightenment, love, the evening star. Uh, you have all of the aspects of war and, and conflict. And this was an Assyrian model of uh, Ishtar. Now, Ashtar, in, as is explained in Dragon of Two Flames, is the original Lucifer, for which the uh, Halil ben Sahar, or Son of the Dawn, uh, was brought about in Isaiah. Use your knowledge of demonology as you enter the path of the Luciferian, the, the path that you choose as a Luciferian, initiate yourself using the demonology that most speaks to you, the, the uh, pantheons that most inspire you. What top two uh, deific mask would you say you're most connected to and why? And then with that said, start invoking. But look, uh, in the moment of invoking, and throwing yourself into reciting and invoking and bringing this forth, you must think about, with that deific mask, a flash of what you want to achieve from that. Not just experimenting, not just uh, achieving a, some kind of mundane thing that you need materialistically, but an overall goal. How does that manifest? How does it speak to your daemon, your instinct, your true will? Developing that, you'll be able to connect those just as, a, as an artist in your mind. And then you'll slowly start to, using your thoughts, your words, and your actions, establish a pattern towards those things you want in life, spiritually and materially. Remember to maintain a balance between those. And establishing this type of thing, and cultivating the black flame, is cultivating your own inner spirituality. It's very important to do that because it doesn't speak to converting other people, um, but it speaks to building your center, your being, and not allowing lesser things outside of that to tear that down. Once you establish a faith in yourself, no other person can argue with you about it and try to take that from you or convert you to some slave mentality religion. You have to make those choices and stand for who you are. So adversarial light, if you follow it step by step, gives a deific mask, basic representation of the adversary. You can take Dragon of the Two Flames if you're a lady and there's uh, the circle of goddesses and it deals with and it explains how to work with those. This would be a little more detailed grimoire, but it goes back to the Syrian Canite pantheon, which is very important for the eventual Klopothic or modern or medieval devil and demons. 
these all have power. And uh, tapping into those is equally as important. The Egyptian pantheon is your thing, Necromenion. There are steps there too. Cultivating it and listening to your instincts is very important. As you achieve your goals, you relate and meditate upon that and balance what you're achieving with what you want to achieve in the future. This is how you can apply basic steps in adversarial magic. Purpose, uh, complete intent, and investment of will, desire, and belief. Thank you.